jump in the transport? <laughs> oh, yeah. Get the game! Let me get one more. Coming back. Get one more. Help me get one more. Why did I get 10 second deployment Ow. time? I didn't fucking do anything. Oh, fucking. Please, Lord. Get one more. So today's guide, if you didn't already get the message, is going to be about medic. I'm going to try and keep this as short and sweet as possible. Now, a medic's only role in this game is to keep people alive. Now, it seems like some medics don't get this just, so rewatch the video if you need to hear that again. And you've got several tools in your tool bag to do this. The biggest one being the syringe, or hand pad if you're the Soviets. As you see on screen now, I am reviving someone who's in the critically injured state. And you have 20 syringes, so you've got plenty to go around. So don't feel like you have to pick and choose who you need to heal or get back up back in the fight. And the pro of this, well, you don't have to go back to an outpost or a garrison and wait 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds, however long, depending on your spawn timer will be or how unlucky you are. And it allows you to get people back up right where they were. So that way they can stay where they're at and keep fighting instead of having to run back from an outpost or garrison that may be hot anyway. So that's the big thing with syringes. Like I said, you've got 20 of them, use them up, you got plenty. And nine times out of 10, you're gonna probably get killed before you use all of them. So don't be worried about using them, use them all. Your second tool, of course, is the bandages. You've got 20 of these, and you've got several perks with these. Simply put, first off, if you get hit, you're able to heal yourself at a way faster rate than the average soldier. And you're able to heal soldiers at a regular rate if they get hurt, which is another big plus. So the bandages are used just especially if your teammates start running out of bandages and so they can keep their guns up and keep fighting while you heal them. I mean, it is your job after all. That's why they give you 20 bandages. So that's a big thing with bandages and that's your second uh, tool in your tool bag. Now your third bit you could have if you use the second class like you see me running on screen, you get the medical resupply box, which works just as well as a ammo or explosive ammo box. People can go up to it if they're out of bandages and refill their bandages, and you can refill your medical supplies as well. So you have that as well. Now, you are a medic, and as I've already mentioned, your one job is to keep your team alive. You are not to be shooting at the enemy. You are to keep people alive so they can do the shooting for you. You are Desmond Doss. You are meant to do no harm. You are a conscientious objector. You let your team do the fighting while you keep them alive. The game even does this for you as well. If you pay attention and you are using the first class, you'll notice a distinct lack of ammo in your rifle. For instance, for the M1 Carbon, you have 30 rounds of ammo or two mags, and for the Russians and Germans, you have 20 rounds of ammo for the Car 98 and most of the guns. The game does not want you to be attacking the enemy. They want you to keep people alive. Don't mistake the lots of pistol ammo you see on screen now. Pistols are very weak. You really don't want to be using those, especially at range. So. Your one job, keep people alive. And I just, I see this way too often with medics. They just completely disregard and completely forget about their duties. You need to keep people alive. They got better weapons than you do, especially assault rifles, other bolt action rifles, semi-automatic rifles, machine guns. Let them do the killing. And this is reflected in how you should be playing. You should be sitting back behind your allies. You should not be the point man. You should be sitting back behind cover, waiting for people to go down. That way you can get them up. That is your one job and how you should be playing. You should not be a frontline person unless it really comes down to it. And that's when you're getting pinched or surrounded or things get really dire. But as you see here, I'm trying to sit back and let my team do the fighting to the front lines while running back and forth to different parts of cover in case people go down in different areas. Now, this leads me on to my next point. What's your risk tolerance? How far out of your way are you going to go and get someone? Are, is someone in an open field under fire? Are you behind cover? Do you still have smoke grenades? Do you have covering fire? 
Are you right by some cover and they're just outside and you can maybe cheese the game mechanics? Just little tiny questions here that can determine between getting someone up, not being able to get someone up to keep yourself alive so you can keep reviving other people who go down, or making the risky play potentially to revive someone and put your life on the line to get someone else. Now, there's no right or wrong answer of what your risk tolerance is. There's just some people that it's better just to stay alive behind cover with your allies and let them go out. And there's times that you can make the risky revive, especially if you play your cards right. You do get smoke bombs, and if you're abusing the second class, you'll get four of them. This is good to help with pushes and getting people up, but I digress. So that's the questions you need to ask yourself. What's going on around you? And that comes down to a keen sense of awareness. Now, I know with this gaming and Millsim, I can make the argument that you should be talking for every class, but if there's one regular infantry class that you might want to have a mic for, it's probably Medic. You're going to be trying to get a bunch of different people up from different squads, and it might be good to communicate with them. Now, you have the proximity chat measure that within 50 meters, you can talk to blueberries or, you know, your blue teammates. This could be used to let them know, hey, I'm coming to you. Stay alive. You know, don't 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 give up. I, I'm going to try and get you. Use that to your advantage. It's good to have communication. And if you are a consistent medic, and when I mean consistent medic, if you're consistently able to get people up at least at a decent rate, not inconsistent rate, and you're communicating, at least 50% of the time, I'd argue people will stay up longer knowing that you are getting people up, you're communicating, and your time to get over to will not be a waste. Now, obviously, that's not guaranteed. You're still going to have people who just give up because they do. But if you're communicating and you're doing your job, people are going to stay alive longer until you go down. And that's really it for Medic. There's really not much to go over for Medic. It's very simple. It's like my Rifleman guy. There's not much to go over. You have one simple job, and it's to keep people alive. So there's that. Um, if you made it this far, thank you very much. I'm going to leave a Discord link at the bottom in the link description. I appreciate you joining that. Uh, if you liked the video, please like. Leave a comment if you want to see something next. A uh, little tidbits I may have missed if I did miss anything. Um, I appreciate any of the feedback. I do look at the comments. But uh, anyway, have a good rest of your night, and see you on the next guide. Sanitita! Bit of a tight spot. Ah, danke!